Welcome back. We are studying various methods to solve differential equations. Um, initial value problems, really, we are trying to give study methods which approximate uh, the solution uh, at various points which are equally spaced. So let me start sharing my slides. What we have been looking at are the Taylor methods of various order. And while we have noticed that these Taylor methods are uh, of very good uh, accuracy, but the number of computations which are involved in them is uh, rather large. So that's what we are looking at. They have the desirable property of high order local truncation error, but they also have the disadvantage of requiring the computation and evaluation of various derivatives of this function f of ty. So this is a complicated and time consuming procedure. So actually in practice, the Taylor methods are seldom used. They are not used that often. What we would like to do is to learn approximation methods to solve the initial value problems, which do not require the high number of computations, but they have the error to the similar order. That's what we would like to have. So uh, uh, the modification that we have to do to these methods is a very simple modification. But before going to that, let's see the uh, basic uh, result of Taylor's theorem in two variables. We have been using Taylor's theorem in one variable several times, and now we look at Taylor's theorem in two variables. And these lead to what is called, uh, this discussion will lead to what is called a uh, set of Rungi Kutta methods. So <laughs> you can already maybe crack several jokes on the names of uh, these methods, but uh, these are supposed to be two Ger German mathematicians and perhaps the first name is Runga, that's how it is uh, pronounced and second is Kutta, but uh, you are free to pronounce them in any way you want. So let's look at Taylor's theorem and two variables. So this is the theorem which says that suppose you have a function on, in two variables and all its partial derivatives of several orders, so say order up to n plus one, are continuous on this particular rectangle. The rectangle is A to B cross C to D. Okay, this is the rectangle that we are looking at. If your function as well as all its partial derivatives of some certain order are continuous on this, and you fix a point t naught y naught in this rectangle. Now let me try to give you an analogy with the Taylor's theorem in one variable that we are used to. So there what we have is that f of t naught is uh, or f of t is equal to f of t naught plus some certain uh, t minus t naught into f prime at t naught plus uh, t minus t naught square by two into f double prime at t naught plus dot dot dot. This is what we have. So there is a polynomial in t naught and then there is an error term. So the um, value of the function at t is a certain polynomial in t involving t naught also. So it's a polynomial in t plus an error term. And the error term is for some point xi. So we have a similar statement here. It says that for every ty in that particular rectangle, there are these two constants, xi and mu. Xi is between t and t naught. Mu is between y and y naught. With f ty equal to a polynomial plus an error term. So where pn is called the nth Taylor polynomial in two variables for the function f about t naught comma y naught and rn ty is the remainder term associated with this polynomial p and ty. Now there are the xi and mu and you may be wondering where they have gone. So the, R, the error term that you have rn ty that will involve xi and mu. Similar to how the error term for usual function in one variable would involve the number xi and unknown quantity xi. So here we have two unknown quantities. How are these Pn and Rn given? So the polynomials Pn and Rn are given in the following, following way. Pn is given by f of t naught y naught plus, this is the term consisting of first order partial derivatives. 
t minus t naught del f by del t t naught y naught plus y minus y naught del f by del y at t naught y naught. This is the term involving second order derivatives. So t minus t naught square upon 2 del square f upon del t square t naught y naught plus t minus t naught y minus y naught del square f upon del t del y t naught y naught plus y minus y naught square upon 2 del square f upon del y square t naught y naught plus some more terms and finally we will have the nth order term which is 1 upon n factorial summation j going from 0 to n, n choose j, t minus t naught power n minus j, y minus y naught power j and then there is a huge partial derivative which is the nth del n f upon del t n minus j del y j at t naught y naught. So this is a, a uh, very complicated looking polynomial but it's much better than the usual function that you would have there and of course the as usual the uh, error term would be looking at the highest degree term in the polynomial and take one more degree of that and replace t naught y naught by xi and mu that's what the error term looks like so this is how the error term is given where we are looking at 1 upon n plus 1 factorial summation j going from 0 to n plus 1, n plus 1 choose j, t minus t naught power n plus 1 minus j, y minus y naught power j, del n plus 1 f upon del t, n plus 1 minus j, del y, j, xi mu. Okay, so basically what it means to say is that this Taylor's theorem in two variables says that a function which is reasonable behave, uh, with a reasonable behavior on the rectangle, it is given by a polynomial in two variables plus an error term. This is what it means and the error term involves only these partial derivatives of the corresponding order. Okay. Now we are coming to runge kutta methods for order 2 of order 2. So what, what do these methods look like? The very first step in deriving so these are these are again difference equations met, equation methods so we will have w naught equal to the initial value and w i plus 1 will be w i plus h times a function capital t so the first step in deriving a runway kutta method is to determine the values for a1 alpha 1 and beta 1 with the property that this particular polynomial this particular function a1 f t plus alpha 1 y plus beta 1 approximates capital T ty which is f of ty plus h by 2 f prime ty. You will immediately see that uh, this uh, capital T is nothing but the difference function that we have used in the difference method which is the Taylor's method of order 2. Okay, that's why this is called the Runge Kutta method of order 2. Okay. So, what we are looking at is instead of looking at this particular capital T, we would like to replace it with this simpler looking function. Of course, the a1, alpha1 and beta1 are to be determined, but we will determine them with the property that the error is no greater than big O of x square. Meaning whatever involves h square, that will be ignored. Anything that involves h square, h cube, h power 4 and so on, they will be ignored. We will look at only the quantities which are the constant terms, the function value and something perhaps involving h. Those are the things that we are going to keep in our mind but the higher power of h will be ignored. That's what we mean by saying that the error should not be greater than big O of h square. Okay, so uh, we should perhaps uh, de derive a formula for this capital T and what we have is that uh, f prime t comma y which is really the derivative of the function f with respect to t. This is uh, given by del f by del t at t y plus del f by del y of t y dot y prime of t. This is how this uh, derivative with respect to t can be computed but y prime t is nothing but f of t y. So we put that value there. So we will replace y prime t by the term f t y. 
and this is what we get now so for capital t we have a formula if capital t is the function plus h by 2 del f by del t plus h by 2 del f by del y dot f t y okay this is the formula for capital t we would like to derive a similar formula for our this particular function value and that's why we will now be using the taylor's theorem uh, into variable to compute a nice looking formula for this uh, a1 times ft plus alpha 1 y plus beta 1 so let's do that um, you will have a1 so a1 is a constant that will be multiplied to each term but what we will have is that f of t comma y is there plus the first derivatives they will come which are a1 alpha 1 del f by del t t y plus a1 beta 1 del f by del y t y and then there will be the um, error term because we are looking at only the first order thing we are not looking at the higher order uh, terms and how is the r1 the error term given the remainder term given it is given in terms of these various constants so you have the difference of t minus t naught is alpha 1 so you will get alpha 1 square by 2 del 2 f by del t square at xi mu plus t minus t naught y minus y naught and therefore you get alpha 1 beta 1 and ultimately in the third term you are going to get y minus y naught square upon 2 so that gives you beta 1 square by 2 so these are this is how the error term is given and the xi is between t and L, t plus alpha 1 mu is between y and y plus beta 1 so we have a description for a1 f t plus alpha 1 y plus beta 1 and there is a description for r1 okay so we now need to match these two quantities we have the earlier description for capital t ty and now we have a description for a1 f t plus alpha 1 y plus beta 1 we will match these two and get some equations so the equations that we are going to get will involve these three terms f of t y del f by del t at t y and del f by del y at t y capital t also has these terms and a1 f also has these terms so we will match the corresponding uh, coefficients so when you are looking at the coefficients of f t y you are going you will get a1 is equal to 1 when you look at del f by del t you get a1 alpha 1 equal to h by 2 and finally when you look at del f by del y you get a1 beta 1 is h by 2 f t y now a1 is already 1 so we conclude that a1 is 1 with that we get alpha 1 which is h by 2 and beta 1 is h by 2 f t comma y and therefore we get that capital t of t comma y you remember this is given by so we are equating it with some particular value and that particular value is this f of a1 is now 1 right so that a1 being 1 that is uh, ignored and we have alpha 1 is h by 2 so therefore we have f of t plus h by 2 and beta 1 is h by 2 f of t y so therefore we will add that particular quantity to y and we also have the remainder term that is important so let's look at what the remainder term looks like remainder term will have these particular quantities but we notice that this is h square by 8 h square by 4 and h square by 8 again so the coefficients are of the order of h square and if your all second order partial derivatives of the function are bounded then what we have is that this remainder term is of the order of h square so after all this hard work what we have been able to obtain is that capital t is given by this particular function value where you will have a1 is h alpha 1 is h by 2 and beta 1 is h by 2 f of t comma y we ignore the error term. this is what we have and as a consequence the order of error for this method this difference method will be the same the order will be the same as that of the taylor method of order two. 
again both of them have the same order of error which is of the order of h square okay so the difference equation that we will get is by replacing the capital t by this particular function value this is what we are going to do and this is a very specific runge kutta method which is known as the midpoint method there is a, a set of runge kutta methods for various such uh, particular uh, taylor methods and uh, this particular is called the midpoint method what it does is that it will give w not equal to alpha and it will give w i plus 1 to be w i plus h and now you would typically have a capital t that capital t has been replaced by this function value so you will have f evaluated at t i plus h by 2 because t has to be replaced by t i y has to be replaced by w i so you will have the second term second coefficient is w i plus h by 2 f of t i w i this is for i going from 0 to n minus 1 and let's do an example to make sure that we have understood this so what we do is that we use the midpoint method with capital n equal to 10 <clears throat> small h equal to 0.2 ti equal to 0.2 times i and w not which is 0.5 to approximate the solution to our usual example which is y prime equal to y minus t square plus 1 and y not is 0.5 so the difference formula which i have computed here for you is w i plus 1 equal to 1.22 w i minus 0.0088 i square minus 0.008 i plus 0.218 and the first two steps of this method will give w1 equal to 0.828 and w2 is 1.21136 we give the table of our values on the next slide and you see that already the errors are not too bad meaning remember that this is similar to the taylor's method of order 2 and if you remember the taylor method of order 2 already for 0.2 we had a worse error than this and here the errors are not so bad in the midpoint method the actual formula for y is also given here and we will see one more variant of runge kutta method in the next lecture and then go ahead with our study of differential equations so see you until then thank you